Hello everybody, uh, I hope you're managing to uh, keep well and that you're doing okay in these difficult days. Uh, as you've probably already noticed, I've moved to a different part of the house today just to get a different angle and a different bit of lighting. And today I want to talk about uh, one of my favourite hymns. And I guess if I'm honest, the reason that it was initially my favourite hymn is because it's the one that is sung at the cup final every year. And being a big football fan, uh, I, I loved that moment where they'd suddenly burst, these these hundreds and 100,000 fans would burst into song singing this hymn abide with me it's a really odd choice if you look at the words to be sung at the cup final uh, but it is a big emotional moment just before the game starts there's pictures of elton john in 1984 who was chairman of watford who were in the final that year in tears as the song is being sung uh, and apparently it started, uh, the first year that it was sung was 1927, which was the fifth FA Cup final at Wembley Stadium. And it was chosen because George V was visiting uh, that day and was coming to watch the game and it was his favourite hymn. So uh, it was played and sung and every single year since then it's now become tradition to sing Abide With Me. But it's a strange song to sing at a cup final if you look at the words. Uh, and over the years, as I've uh, sung the song elsewhere and looked into it a bit more, I find there's a really interesting story behind this hymn, which has caused me to continue to have it as one of my favourites. Uh, the words were written by an Anglican minister called Henry Francis Light. He spent most of his ministry at All Saints Church in a little, uh, which is in a little fishing village in Devon called Lower Brixham. Uh, but between earlier than that, between 1915 and 1918, he had been a curate in County Wexford in Ireland. And two years after moving on from there, uh, in 1920, he travelled back to visit an old friend called William Le Hunt, who was close to the end of his life. As Light sat next to his friend on his deathbed, William kept repeating the phrase, Abide with me, abide with me abide with me and it's believed that shortly after leaving uh, his friend's bedside Henry Light wrote the words of the hymn and gave a copy of it to Le Hunt's family. Now for most of his life uh, Henry suffered from poor health and in those days people would travel to the continent to try and improve their health by recuperating in the warmer weather. Henry himself had done this many times, but in 1947, at the age of 54, he contracted tub tuberculosis. And as he struggled daily for breath, he realised he was nearing the end of his life. And it is at this point that Light recalled and reproduced the words he had written 27 years earlier in County Wexford. Here is his daughter's recollection of what happened. The summer was passing away and the month of September, that month in which he was once more to quit his native land, arrived, and each day seemed to have a special value as being one day nearer his departure. His family were surprised and almost alarmed at his announcing his intention of preaching once more to his people. His weakness and the possible danger attending the effort were urged to prevent it, but in vain. It was better, as he used to so often playfully, uh, as he used to say often playfully when in comparative health, it is better to wear out than to rust out. He felt that he should be enabled to fulfil his wish and feared not for the result. His expectation was well founded. He did preach and amid the breathless attention of his hearers gave them a sermon on the Holy Communion. In the evening of the same day, he placed in the hands of a near and dear relative the little hymn, Abide With Me, with an air of his own composing adapted to the words. Well, here are a few words from Henry Light's final message at his little church in, well, it's not, it wasn't a little church, it was a big church, but in a little town in Devon. He said this, O oh, brethren, I stand here among you today as alive from the dead, if I may hope to impress it upon you and induce you to prepare for that solemn hour which must come by all, by a timely acquaintance with the death of Christ. 
That evening, Henry handed over the completed hymn to a family member and the next day he left for Italy but never got there, dying just a few weeks later in Nice on the 20th of November 1947. So the first time the hymn was ever sung was at Henry Light's own funeral. And the tune we sing now is not his original tune but one called Eventide, which was especially composed by William Monk. Henry took his inspiration for the hymn from Luke chapter 24, 4 verse 29. In the NIV it says, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. But in the authorised version, which was the one that Henry uh, would have used, it said this, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. Henry turned this biblical line into a metaphor for our lives. And by changing the wording from us to me, he makes it a powerful personal prayer for God to be with me, with us individually, in life, in death. O oh Lord, abide with me. I've always found this hymn very moving and I continue to be amazed that it is still sung at the cup final every year. But what I love most about the words is that even though they are written right at the end of Henry's life, they are wonderfully triumphant. The moment we die is considered by most people the ultimate moment of defeat. Yet here Henry is celebrating a victory. Listen to one of the verses. I fear no foe with thee at hand to bless. Ills have no weight and tears no bitterness. Where is death's sting? Where grave thy victory? I triumph still if thou abide with me. You might recognise some of those words from 1 Corinthians 15, 55. Uh, and again, in, in the authorised version, those words were this. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? And Henry's included those words in his song. So I love that at the end of his life, Henry Light is full of hope. And this isn't a desperate, irrational hope. This isn't wishful thinking. This is sure and certain hope based on the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen to these words from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 to 14. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. This hope is eternal hope, and it's found in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus himself in John chapter 5 verse 24 says, Very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. Maybe in these days, perhaps uh, even those watching have lost somebody close to them, somebody that they love. Maybe there's fear and anxiety uh, about possibly catching coronavirus ourselves and what that might result in. Perhaps there are people beginning to think about the end of their life and what that might mean uh, and uh, that, those thoughts being in your heads. There is an eternal hope that's available in Jesus and Henry Light had this eternal hope. He knew that in Jesus he had victory over death. And this wonderful hymn, which came to mind right at the end of his life, celebrates that victory. That victory is yours too, if you put your trust in Jesus. He is the hope of the world. The song will uh, start in a moment, but I'll finish with these words, which come shortly after the words that Henry quoted in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. It says this, thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Enjoy the hymn. 